Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Chuckles here. Back at it again. Got another Extreme Airsoft review. This week we're taking a look at the Tokyo Marine High Cycle Aug. Here we go. Here we have it. One the only Tokyo Marine Aug. These things are fantastic. Now the body is made of mostly nylon pyroplastic. The only metal parts are part of the upper right here. And then the lug that's holding the uh, lower rail of the barrel. But it's not like it's cheap or it's crappy. It's really solid. Doesn't wiggle, nothing moves on it, nothing moves around, it doesn't creak or anything. Um, the reason that they use mostly plastic is overseas it's illegal for them to have metal airsoft guns or metal guns in general, so instead it has to be plastic. So that's why, but don't be fooled, this is absolutely a high quality body and these things are definitely able to keep up with some of the best. Taking a look right up front. You come with, comes with a standard HU flash hider. If you remove the flash hider, it's counterclockwise, 14 millimeter. The only issue is that you'd probably need some sort of an extension. It's really small, there's not a lot of space, so you wouldn't be able to fit most suppressors there. So definitely get a barrel extension if you plan on getting a suppressor or a flash hider or something like that. Attached to the barrel is an under rail. So you can do whatever you want. It comes with this nice little grip. You just unscrew the bottom. You can move it forward and back. Screw it on, tighten it. Still works good. Really nice to grab onto. Um, fantastic feature, but then you can put anything else that you want underneath. Up top, you have about a foot of rail. This is a lot of space to put any kind of optic you want. Um, red dot sight four times sight, whatever. You have front and rear sights. The front sight's not adjustable at all. The rear sight is um, adjustable for uh, windage, but not elevation. And you have a selection of day sight or day sight. So it's just the same, even though you can flip them. But they attach pretty easily onto the rail, just screws and you can tighten them up really good with flatheads. The charging handle's cool, spring-loaded, Kind of lock it up like it's an HK style gun. Um, reveals a hop up. We'll talk a little bit more about the hop up later. But then, if you wanted to, you could HK slap it. Not really recommended uh, for anything, any gun ever, but it's just some kind of cool feature that you can definitely uh, have fun with. The other side, on the right side of the body, because of the small rail, it's about five different slots. So you can fit a flashlight, GoPro. Um, laser, whatever you kind of want to mount on the side on an offset angle, which is really nice, especially because it's almost like it's a 45 offset. So if you have a flashlight, it's right there, so it's not in the way of your hand, either of them, uh, doing any sort of manipulation. Drop back to here, so you have the standard kind of caged up uh, odd grip. It's really nice, it's really solid. You can't really adjust anything, but it fits the hand very nicely, pretty ergonomic. You have the selector, which is uh, actually cool what Tokyo Marui did with uh, the AUG, as they were kind of the first ones to do this. So having it all the way to the left, and we'll give you a close-up of this, all the way to the right is um, semi-automatic, is, no. Nope. So then the fire selector is actually pretty cool. What they did is most AUGs have a two-stage trigger, so we'll demonstrate here. A half pull is semi auto and then a full pull, so once you hit that break point, is going to be fully automatic. So sometimes you'll skip, but um, not too big of an issue. But what they decided to do was, when you have it all the way to the right, and you can see the white dot, that's on safe. You turn it over halfway, it's semi, and it won't go further than uh, just the standard semi-automatic shot. So you can't shoot full auto, your finger won't accidentally slip which, I mean, it happened to me once or twice when, I was, when I'm going to be testing this thing out. Um, all the way to the right, you can do semi and full auto, so it affords you both of those options. What I know my boy Brain Exploder did is he drilled out a hole right where it goes to semi, and he put a pin in his. I don't know if the JG Hogs do that, but that was something that he had an issue with, so that's a way that he prevented it from going fully automatic. 
That's a fantastic feature. So then, moving further back, you have access to the hop-up chamber, pull the charging handle up and back, you can access it, turning it, uh, as per the usual, it's a rotary style, turning it uh, counterclockwise is going to apply more hop. You can remove this rubber part, put it on the other side, you can access the hop-up from either side, and it'll work just fine. Something cool for lefties or righties, again, that are a very great advantage is that the magazine release is center. So whether you're a righty, you use your left thumb, or your lefty, your right thumb, all you gotta do is push up, pull the magazine out, pop it in your dump pouch, get a fresh one. And it goes in really nice, really solid. Thing doesn't move around. The only thing I've heard, Tokimuri Augs, uh, their AUG, is, their AUG magazines work fine. I've heard the JG ones are a little bit of a tighter fit. We don't have any to test sadly, but that's just something to keep aware of. You might have to shave some of it down, modify it to get it. But it's not so bad. AUG magazines, a standard 300 round high cap. Windy wheel at the bottom the same way as an M4. So you'd still have to have your arm back here if you were had to wind and shoot at the same time. Back here, you have a rear pin, and you can swap this from either side by taking off the butt pad. Um, just a simple little uh, washer holding it on, so it's nothing crazy. Pull off the butt pad, you access the back of the gun, which is the battery storage. Um, batteries that we tried, 8.4 volts, which are usually recommended for these, will fit just fine. Brick types, uh, split type, no stick type. Um, 7.4s, brick types, will fit really well. Uh, and maybe a stick type if it's a small enough uh, milliamp hours. Um, an 11.1 brick fit, but a 9.6 will not fit. Um, I recommend a 7.4. Um, it'll still give you a decent bit of rate of fire and reliability that you can definitely expect out of the sky. Cool other features that this thing offers. It actually has a quick change barrel, so what you do, pull the charging handle back, lock it up, there's a small knob on the side that you push down, you turn the barrel to the left, pops right out, there you go, pop ups right there, you can tell that it's a rotary style, which is kind of awesome, that's really what you want in most guns. And then to put it back on, you just slide it in, hit that lever again, lock it down, Good to go. All right, so another kind of neat feature that this AUG has to offer is you can remove the entire upper. So some people have multiple uppers, some people might have uh, different styles, so they might have a longer one for outdoors, shorter one like this for indoors. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna push this pin almost all the way out. It doesn't have to go all the way out, just enough for the upper to pop off. You can pull it out, slide a new one, or the original one back in, push that pin, you're good to go, the thing's solid, and it's on and ready to go. Alright, so, I've done enough talking, let's head over to the shooting booth and check out what kind of results we can get with this thing. Alright guys, here we are, we got the Tokimori AUG High Cycle, got it hooked up to a 9.6. Let's see what we can do. Set line. Not bad. And then, full auto, which is what you're here for. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Cranked, dude. Whew. So as you guys saw from the chrono test, we're getting about 250 FPS with a 0.25 gram BB. That's perfect for indoors. 250 uh, and up, I would figure, is something feasible. Pistols will sometimes shoot at that. But you're still going to be able to shoot people and hit them decently uh, hard. Uh, the rate of fire is... 1500 a minute, which comes down to um, 25 BBs a second on a 9.6. So you can really crank this thing. Um, and you might lose a few if you drop to an 8.4 or a uh, 7.4, but that's perfectly fine. Most games aren't full auto, but when you do have that full auto that you need, the sins gonna be ready for it. I definitely don't recommend using an 11.1. We tried an 11.1 in it, and we actually, uh, the gun couldn't handle it, and we blew up the fuse. Nothing crazy, it's a quick fix, but I wouldn't recommend running an 11 one, but you can really crank the rate of fire on this thing. Final thoughts? 
buy this thing. Uh, you're definitely getting a high level performance. It's going to be perfect for indoors. You, you don't play a lot of full auto games. When you do, you have that cranking it at 25 rounds a second, but it'll still go semi-auto. And you don't even need to touch any select or anything. It's really nice to not have to worry about that. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this review on the Tokyo Mary High Cycle Log. We have these in stock, plus some several other uh, high cycle options. So definitely come in, check them out. If we don't have something that you want, let us know. We can try to get it for you. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to us here on YouTube, Extreme Airsoft. Um, like this video, subscribe, it's very important. We're going to be doing our podcast on Monday that we normally do our live streams. And then we're going to be posting up reviews pretty much every Thursday. Uh, so you'll be able to see some of our other links in the description. Um, so until then, thank you guys so much. Hope to see you guys this weekend. Get your code.